Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I've got a card today involving tulips and it's a really unpredictable layout. What if I told you some were upside down? Yeah, I know, you're probably thinking, what, she's lost her mind. I haven't, but it's really fun. Check it out. I'm really excited to show you how to put the card together to create a really interesting visual format. And look at, other than the banner, there's no layers at all. Quite simple. Make sure you head over to my blog when you're done watching the video. If you're here from YouTube, click on the eye at the top of the screen. That's gonna navigate you right to the blog post, making it easy for you to find the pictures of today's card, as well as that one cutting dimension for that banner. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started. I thought the card turned out pretty, don't you? I tried really hard to create a cascade here, leaving a little bit of room for the banner, but I have to tell you, the more I made of these, the less important that became. Because it's on a white strip, it works really well, even over tulips in your background. And I think just the interesting effect is about the direction. So let's go ahead and start with this card. You're gonna find all the cutting dimensions for the project over on my blog. The link is right here on the screen. If you're viewing here from YouTube, you can click the I button here at the top. That's the information button. It'll take you right to the blog post associated with today's project. I started with the tulips first. And so I'm gonna start with my darker shade, which is Dapper Denim. You'll notice this is a two-step stamp, meaning that there are several images for the same flower. The one is more detailed. See how these have outlines in them? And then the other is solid. So this would be your background image and this would be your foreground image. And I'm gonna show you how you layer one on top of the other to give you that realistic type of look to your image. So here is my darker outline image. I'm gonna start with my center flower. So I'm gonna tip a little bit and I'm gonna stamp it here. So that's gonna be my big one. And then I'm gonna want my other big one upside down on the other side. So I'm gonna stamp that one here near the edge. I'm gonna work with a different size tulip as well. Now switching over to the detailed smaller tulip. So do you see the lines in this one? And this is where I'm gonna fill in. So I'm gonna do one here a little bit higher. And I'm gonna do another here a little bit more tipped. I think I'm gonna to try to squeeze one in down here at the bottom. Any variation in the ink is just gonna lend credence to this project, so don't worry. I'm turning the card so now the fold is here and I'm inking it up and I'm gonna stamp one here and I'm gonna stamp another down here. So I'm leaving a little room here for the words when I go ahead and mount them. And like I said in the beginning, if it doesn't work out, don't worry. I'm now switching colors. This is the Dapper Denim. I'm gonna switch over to Island Indigo for the lighter or the more solid shape, which is gonna be the background image. And you're also gonna see, do you see how it looks blotchy? It's like that on purpose to give that some texture. So this is gonna go right over the top and just do your very best. And with photopolymer, it's easy to do. So now we have one. I'm gonna flip this around and I'm gonna do the other. Press firmly. Do you see how I didn't press really hard right there and I've got a little bit of an oops? All right, what can we do about this? Well, you know what? There's a couple things. The first is we can fill it in with a little bit of an aqua painter. So I'm gonna grab my aqua painter because I'm gonna look at this as an opportunity. And I'm gonna squeeze off that tip. I wanna make sure that this is not really, really wet. And I'm gonna take a little color from here and I'm just gonna blot this in. And I'm looking for it to look uneven. I just want a little color there. All right, so even if it's not colored all the way, I'm fine with it. All right, that's better than nothing, right? The other thing you do, of course, is to start over. And if you catch it right away like I didn't, that residual ink is still on the stamp. So all you have to do is just line it up really well and then press and you'll get that spot you missed. Just a great thing to practice. It's a good tip for you too. Now keep in mind that's wet, so we're not gonna work on that just yet. And now let's go over to the stems. I used Old Olive. And I'm actually gonna use the stem itself first before I do any of the leaves. So I'm gonna ink this up. By graduating the size of the flowers, we have also determined that some are gonna be taller and shorter than others. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press those in there. The other thing is too, you wanna make sure, especially with this long stamp, that you're providing good solid pressure, which is what I didn't do in that large tulip right here. Otherwise I wouldn't have had that problem. I'm flipping it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And 
this side. Those of you that are probably wondering, could you have filled this in with a marker? Well, it would have been really, really dark and a lot more noticeable. All right, so now we've got our stems. There are two different leaves inside the stamp set. This one's got a little bit of a hooked edge and this one is more straight. So I'm just gonna play around with these a little bit. I'm gonna start on my left side making sure I've got it inked up. And then again, this is a image that is not solid everywhere. It's supposed to look like that. And then I'm gonna do some a little taller and some a little shorter. And I'm gonna just alternate. So I'm just gonna have a little fun with this. And then this one, I want it to have a little bit of a hook out the side. Really a simple card, isn't it? The beauty of a great stamp set is that it does all the work for you. Here's that straight leaf. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to image those in as well by stamping them again at varying heights i'm going to have a little bit of dimension to my project and then down here this little guy what do you think i think we're going to give him one as well turning my card my crease now is at the top and filling that in and then over here on this side as well and i've got a little space so i'm going to kind of fan that one out just a little bit simple huh let's add some definition to those tulips Inside the stamp set, you're gonna see these little like dots. These are actually to be the pollen, the center of your tulips. One is a little bit bigger than the other, and I found that the bigger one fits better in the bigger flowers and the smaller one in the smaller flowers. I'm a big fan of Memento ink when it comes to photopolymer. So I'm just gonna take a look, and I think this is my bigger image, it is. And I think this is good and dry. So we're gonna go ahead and ink that up and we are gonna stamp that here. Again, photopolymer makes it easy to line up. I've turned the card. So we've got those two done. And now I'm reaching for that smaller one. And we're gonna stamp that. That little bit really gives it some definition, doesn't it? And again, love photopolymer so that you can actually see right where you're going so you know right where to put those. All right, so now all of those have the little pollen centers for your flower. I'm going to set that aside and I've cut a small piece of Whisper White cardstock for my banner. Remember what I said, all the cutting dimensions are over on my blog. I've got Dapper Denim again and I've pulled out the thanks from the stamp set called Thankful Thoughts. Really, I am enjoying this because there's a lots of varied greetings, both for the inside and the outside of the card. And there's some really nice, big, bold one. Clear Mount is what I'm using, so I'm going to ink that up. And then I'm going to stamp that here, leaving some room on the one side to make my banner tips. We're going to create the banner tips. It'll be on the left side of this banner. So I'm going to make a small slit up the center, and that's a great tip for you when you make your banner tips. If you cut the slit first, you'll almost always guarantee to have a perfect banner every time because it just designates the center. And then I'm coming from the outside corners to the top of my slit. I like to give these a little bit of a curl with my finger, so we've got a little bit of dimension there, and I'm gonna bring in my dimensionals. Gonna flip that over. I'm gonna place dimensionals on the back side here and here. Take off that paper backing. If you have trouble, push your fingernail in the center and then lift the edges. It'll help lift that paper edge for you. And then I'm gonna come all the way over to the side, so this is nice and flush, and then place that. There's that little flick going on. But I'm going to add one more thing. Those of you that follow my videos know I really like embellishments, especially bling. Now you might think, well, these are not very blingy. Well, they're not. But you know what? They remind me of like little dew drops. These are the white perfect accents. And they do come in three sizes. And you can see you get a bunch of them. There are glue dots already on the back. So I'm going to use my paper piercing tool to pick up one of those. So I'm going to get up underneath it. And then I'm going to place one of them up here. And then I'm going to choose a middle-sized one to go down here. I'm looking to form a triangle. So my other one's going to be kind of low. And I think I'm going to do a small one for that since my space here is rather tight. So I think I'm going to actually place this one oh, probably about here. So we've got those little white little accents on the card just for some added dimensions because you know what there's no layers to this card the only layer here is that little bit of a banner so here's the card we created today 
And here's the card I created before you joined me. Remember to head over to my blog for all the pictures and the cutting dimensions as well as a supply list. You'll find it all there. While you're there, check out my online classes tab where you can find two fun ways to stamp with me from home. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I hope you have a great day. See you next time.